going on, guys? Black Scout Survival. And uh, let's first start off talking about this late night live, by the way, if you're new here. But let's first start. You're probably not new here because I'm shadow banned beyond belief. But uh, the state of Missouri sent a bill to the parents of the fallen Marine Lance Corporal Jared Smith, who was killed in the botched Afghanistan withdrawal on August 26th. Uh, under Milley, General Milley and uh, Joe Biden's leadership, they sent his family $3,200 bill to pay for two signs on Interstate 70 in Wentzville, Missouri. And uh, so they the, the signs basically designated this was the Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmidt's Memorial Bridge. Uh, the Missouri Department of Transportation apparently can bill families of fallen police, firefighters, and troops uh, for signs used to honor them. What in Hades? <laughs> Can you believe this? Can you believe the, the world we're living in? This Marine was killed in Afghanistan. And, and the family now, not only they lost their son, but now they have a $3,200 bill because of the memorial. Yeah, they'll remember that all right. Uh, man, I tell you, this, this country just, day to day, it, it just doesn't, like... <laughs> Anyway, so Elon Musk, he's been dropping a lot of, I, I don't know what to think about Elon Musk, to be honest with you, but, but I mean, he does a lot of things right. I don't know if you saw him last, a few weeks ago, maybe three, three weeks ago, he was at the, the World Government Summit or something like that, and basically he spoke against the New World Order, saying that, uh, like, we, we should not have a world where everyone is kind of, you know, working together because uh, it would lead, lead to civilization collapsing, you know, as we know it. And uh, anyway, so he's, he's doing a lot of things right. And especially with Twitter, he's cleaning that junk up. That, that, that place was a cesspool, you know. But uh, anyway, he, uh, Twitter user took the opportunity to showcase a new flag, one for what he called for young, young a youth attracted person pride flag. He said he designed it almost a year ago. I wanted to stray from the oft used horizontal bars motif, but only a little. I wanted to retain some familiarity. Why would you want to retain some familiarity to what? What's that, brother? Tell me. Let me know exactly familiar to, to what. Anyway, you can see his account was suspended here. Elon suspended it. Um, so, Good on Elon for that. But, dudes, the, the thing is, uh, is, is that we the, they're getting more bold. They're getting more bold. And I wanted to share a meme, but I've got a meme that is just absolute fire for this. I don't even know where I can put it at. I, I mean, you might get put on a watch list for posting this thing. But but I'm going to show it at some point in time because this is, is awesome. Uh, but anyway, since we're talking about that. Let's go ahead and segue right into Disney, right? Um, <laughs> since we're on the subject, right? Uh, grooming and all. So my my former governor, Nikki Haley, she really misread the room. Like, <laughs> I believe she thought she was doing the right thing because she was following, you know, Trump's kind of lead by attacking Ron DeSantis. And, and she tweeted this. <laughs> Hey, Disney, my home state will happily accept your 70 plus thousand jobs if you want to leave Florida. We've got great weather, great people, and it's always a great day in South Carolina. South Carolina is not woke, but we're not sanctimonious about it either. Nikki, Nikki, really, really, uh, she, she really misread the room on this one. Anyway, and the reason why she says sanctimonious is because Trump calls Ron DeSantis, Ron the sanctimonious. Um, but why the hell would you want to bring Disney to my state is beyond me. And, and that's also another thing, like my mom works for the state and, uh, when they made a thing where you answer the phone and when my wife worked at the university because they're state employees, when Nikki Haley was, uh, the governor, like her big thing, like the, the, the biggest thing she did for South Carolina was she made state employees answer the phone and say, it's a great day in South Carolina. Like that is like all she really accomplished. You know what I mean? Hey, tribe members, good to see you guys here. Um, so anyway, 
today, actually, this evening, I got a text and it was kind of a, a weird text. You know, it's, it's one of these automated ones. Um, and, and so it's like, we need leadership in Washington, blah, 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 blah. And it was actually a video. So I played the video. It's on one of my phones here. This is, this is the problem. You got to have multiple phones when you're like running businesses and stuff. Um, okay. It said strengthening for great leadership. We need a president who values hard work and freedom and is prepared to go to battle for what he believes in a leader who understands our values Join us in this grassroots effort to bring refined, strong leadership to the White House. We need you on our team. Never back down. And so I'll play the video. He said, son of a steel worker, Ron DeSantis, worked his way through college, joined the Navy, got a bronze star in Iraq. He never backs down. Ron DeSantis is for president. So apparently he announced his presidency today. And uh, I looked all over the news and nowhere did I find it. But the other thing is that their GOP down in Florida is actually voting where he can actually stay governor while running for president. It was just like pretty unprecedented. So we're going to see. And, um, uh, also, along with that matter, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, he's actually hitting one of my favorite barbecue spots down the street here uh, um, tomorrow for lunch. Um, uh, yeah, just down the road from me. But yeah, I don't have time to go see him. Anyway, I, I do love some good barbecue. But anyway, they hit South Carolina uh, early because, um, you know, this is like one of the, I guess, early primary states. So we've already had Nikki Haley. Um I'm sure Ron DeSantis, I think Ron DeSantis may have already been here or he's coming. Uh, so they, they hit it pretty quickly. Trump already hit it. Um, so anyway, but I do got some good scandal for you before we get into the meat potatoes of the video. The, the scandal, dang it. I don't, did I get the photo? I didn't. Let me pull it up. Ross. And, uh, Sorry, F Fuji's, you might know them, Praz Rapper. I was going to pull up a photo, but I'll just bring up an article. The Fuji's rapper Praz found guilty, guilty of political conspiracy, but it's not only that. There, This is an underreported under story, number one, but also it, it, is, it is not just political conspiracy. And so they're really trying to downplay it. So ex-refugee, or sorry, ex-Fuji's um, rapper Praz, who funneled $800,000 to the Barack Obama campaign in 2012. Now, and money laundered, by the way, and funneled is a, is a, <laughs> a nice way of saying it. Um, he was found guilty to, with a scheme to help China influence the U.S. government. Oh, they've been doing that. Um, so he was found guilty of 10 criminal counts related to international conspiracy aiming at influencing the government. Um, the, he should have stuck with music. Like, I mean, the charges stem from his alleged involvement with a failed plot to assist Malaysian businessman Joe Law, Joe Lo, Lau, and the Chinese government into gaining access to U.S. officials, including Barack Obama and Donald Trump. He was acting as an unregistered agent for a foreign government. He was also paid $20 million to secure a photo with Obama. And then he was also f funneled $800,000 to Obama's campaign using straw donors. And that's actually what we've seen, dude. We, uh, James O'Keefe actually has been like really busting that up lately. I don't know if you've paid attention to it, but if you're watching O'Keefe media, um, the straw donors is actually a huge thing in, in the Democrat circles. They're using people that uh, random people addresses. And, the, and so James is going to these various houses. These people know nothing about it. And it's like sums of, you know, forty hundred thousand dollars you know, $40,000, $100,000 donations for these straw donors, and they don't even know what happened, but they're using their names. So probably George Soros, probably a lot of the conspiracies. But the thing is, is that all these conspiracies, these wild conspiracies, like the wildest things you can think up, all come to light. 
And it's mind boggling because people will read where the for, first narrative is on CNN or, or whatever the first news clip, 20 second news buzz clip is. And they'll believe that without researching any further. So to be the difference between being woke and awakened is that you have the common sense to go follow up and do an, an investigation on a story than just taking things at face value. Because when you're woke, you believe all the lies that you're told. When you're awake, you question every freaking thing, right? Um, so that that guy is uh, obviously... I, I, I wonder how many more people like Pros is, is doing this stuff, right? That's the big question. How many more of these guys are out here working for China. I think I've told you guys this years ago, but years ago, um, before I started doing late night lives or anything, just doing tactical survival stuff, I was contacted through Facebook and it was like, Hey, we would like to run some, uh, stories on your Facebook. And they were looking for verified accounts. And the only reason why I got verified account was because I worked for a television show and the people there got me verified early on. Um, but they were looking for verified accounts. And so anyway, they, they said, you know, we're willing to pay you 4,000 to $6,000 a week, depending on how many stories, <laughs> four to $6,000 a week. I mean, we're, 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 we're talking, I mean, uh, 16 to, to, you know, 20, what, $22,000 a month, uh, or sorry, $24,000 a month. I mean, that's great money, right. For just posting some articles. And so some stories they said. And so anyway, I'm like, yeah, send me the stories. Let me see what you're actually wanting me to post. And it was all this like just absolute political propaganda, like literally p political propaganda. And so I never responded to them again. Cause I'm like, this, this is what someone is. You, you'll be arrested for this. Like the FBI will come knocking on your door for, for this kind of stuff, you know? But the, the fact of the matter, they're willing to pay this kind of money to nobodies to post these articles. I actually saw a guy on TikTok say the same thing. Now, he, was, he was an attorney and they offered to pay him uh, large sums of money to post anti-Donald Trump uh, stories and, and, and things like that. So this is commonplace. And maybe even some of your friends are doing this and you don't even know about it. They're posting some wild stories on their social media. They could be getting paid by, you know, uh, foreign agents. So it's happening. It's happening. Trust me. And it's happening way more than what you, I mean, now that our currency is just numbers on a screen, um, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it's happening big time. So yeah, somebody's bringing up the Hunter story. Exactly. Hunter Biden. So let's talk about the, 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 the headline of tonight, right? This is a completely underreported story. I didn't even hear about it, except for Mark from Centerline Sister Systems told me to look into it. Um, like, nobody's talking about this. This is a very serious underreported story that actually happened a few weeks ago. So members of the FBI and U.S. Army Special Operations Command were conducting a exercise, a training exercise in, in downtown Boston, and they raided the wrong hotel room. They detained the person inside before real, realizing their mistake. Okay. Um, the thing is, the person inside was a Delta like airline pilot. And so the FBI said they were helping the military with a training exercise around 10 p.m. on a Tuesday night to simulate a situation that personnel might encounter while in a deployed environment. I don't believe that at all lies you're going to a high-end hotel and just randomly going into a room and, and, and interrogating someone um they say that the mistake was based on inaccurate information this is literally a training exercise that you should this train when you have a training exercise and you like make up all the parameters of it, this isn't a real operation there shouldn't be mistakes. You're making up all the parameters of the training exercise. Why would you get, why would you get inaccurate information? Um, and so they went to the wrong room, detained an individual, not understanding that he was their intended role player. Um, they say that the exercise was meant to enhance soldiers 
skills to operate in realistic, unfamiliar environments. Yeah, <laughs> very unfamiliar. This actually was at the Revere Hotel in, in, in the Boston Common. So again, the person inside the room was a, a Delta Airlines employee. He was detained by the FBI and who I assume to be Delta Force. For 30 minutes, he was interrogated. So, so within the first like couple minutes, would you not realize this ain't the guy that he's not in the, the, the program? I, I did pull up uh, a local uh, news video. Let's watch it and we're going to come back and, and discuss this more. And it certainly was the FBI and the U.S. Army Special Operations Command both say that a training team went to the wrong room based on inaccurate information. That was Tuesday night. Inaccurate information? How? How? You, you, you're you making it up as training. <laughs> it's, it's not like you're getting like information off the streets, like you're doing like uh, an intelligence, intelligence uh, gathering operation prior to the raid. Night. And here we are on Thursday. It's still unclear how such a serious mistake could be made. Sir, bear with me on this one. The FBI's detention of an innocent man during a failed training exercise Tuesday night at Revere Hotel on Stewart Street was clearly an unusual call for Boston police. You can even hear it in the voice of the dispatcher. Delta pilots. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing, like... It's not like you're just going to like in a house. Like if you're going in a house and you're like moving around, like you're like let's say you're room clearing, you're literally going in a hotel that has numbers <laughs> on the doors, right? It's not like oh third one on the left. No, no, like you're going uh, room five forty eight, right? Had people claiming to be FBI agents barge into their room and handcuff them to the bathroom. FBI Boston admits that it and the thing is like that we, we take him in the bathroom and handcuff him like we couldn't have just they cuffed him to something in the bathroom they, they could have just handcuffed him there, there's a team of people agents mistakenly detained a Delta Airlines pilot who had been sleeping in his room on the 15th floor when he woke up to banging on his door sources tell five investigates that that's something they like they just went banging on the door I just, I would love to know what type of operation this is, but we're supposed to be enhancing soldier skills in an unfamiliar terrain. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just totally confused by this uh, whole shindig here. The pilot was handcuffed and interrogated in a bathroom for close to 30 minutes before FBI agents realized their mistake. They had the wrong room, the wrong guy. Todd McGee is a law enforcement and security analyst. It was definitely a, a mix-up in, in the communication process. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> uh, this is something that shouldn't have happened, uh, especially you, you now have a pilot that was traumatized by this, not knowing what in the world was going on. So, uh, Yeah, could you imagine you got special operations and FBI, you're a pilot, you went to sleep, and, and all of a sudden you're like, you hear banging on the door. Next thing you know, you're handcuffed to a toilet and, and get interrogated for 30 minutes. And, and, and you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I mean, that should be like a, a, a prank. That, I mean, like to prank someone like that, that that'd be a good prank. Um, again, this is uh, the highest level of our government. An FBI statement says the FBI Boston. He was probably like saying, he was probably like, man, who put you guys up to this? Was it Ricky? Did Ricky put you guys up to this? Division was assisting the U.S. Department of Defense in conducting a Department of Defense training exercise at a hotel in Boston to simulate a situation their personnel might encounter in a deployed environment. Based on inaccurate information, they were mistakenly sent to the wrong room and detained an individual, not the intended role player. A Boston police report shows that officers... Let's look at this. 12.20 a.m. on Wednesday... Four five officer C Cassino of A436 and Sergeant Whiteman respond to a radio call or investigate person on 200 Stewart Revere Hotel. Law enforcement agent were conducting a training exercise inside the building. They don't say special operations on there, though, do they? They left that part off. Responded after the fact, and though the pilot declined treatment from first responders, he did file a police report.
In addition to the police investigations, Delta Airlines says it is also looking into the. Yeah, Delta's going to not do anything. They're not going to do anything. So we we have special operations, and uh, I'm going to assume it's Delta Force. Uh, I mean, I think it, it's probably Delta. Um, the Posse Comitatus Act in the United States federal law limits military um, from acting within the U.S. Now, you know, now you can train within the U.S. is fine, yes, and but however, we know that it's odd to me that we have Delta operating with the FBI. Now we do know this is proven. I actually have a book over there on my shelf that uh, Delta was deployed with the FBI HRT team in Waco, Texas against the branch Covidians. I'm sorry, branch Covidians, <laughs> the branch Covidians. I'm so used to saying that joke, branch Covidians, the branch Covidians Delta force deployed against the, they were supposed to be there just to assist, but we, we know better. Um, so we're talking about a tier one unit, Delta force and FBI, FBI HRT, which is also what you'd say is a tier one in the law enforcement realm, uh, getting confused during a training operation or training exercise. I really have lost a lot of faith. <laughs> I hope there's somebody above that. I, I, I mean, you're, you're talking about top tier guys. I really hope we, have someone above that because if not, we're, we're, we're in trouble. We're, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, if we, if we can't even freaking find the right room, you know, they're walking around, you know, costs hundreds of thousand dollars to train these guys with, you know, $50,000 worth of gear on each one of them. And they can't even go to the right freaking hotel room. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's not like you're training on base though. Like you're out amongst civilians, Right. You could really F things up pretty badly with this operation. What if dude had a gun in there and he started k -k -k blasting on him? You know, then then the Delta kills a uh, civilian in a hotel in Boston. Um, you know, he was trying to defend himself because I, I stay strapped everywhere. So some dude's coming in raiding me for no reason. Yet they're, they're, they're going to have a problem, right? So you would think they'd put control measures like in place. So uh, something like this wouldn't happen because you do have, you have your role player there that's in your training exercise, but you also have hundreds of civilians in the hotel. Like you think we would have con control measures. Like there'd be someone, you know, sitting back, like watching, like, right. Oh, 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 snap. They're going in the wrong room, guys. Get a hold of them. They're, they're going in the wrong room. You know, um, there was nobody overseeing this. There was no one. It just seems very random. I don't believe the story. It, it, things just don't add up. Like, you could have closed the floor off you were supposed to be on, right? They could have, it's the government. They could have rented the whole room, the whole floor out and made sure there was no one else on the floor. So they wouldn't have a mistake like this. Maybe at least one of the tier one operators would have remembered the room that they were supposed to go to. Oh, we got mis mixed information. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy on, on so many levels. Um, the operational capacity of our most elite soldiers, you know, and then, and then on top of that, the coordinated workings with them and the FBI. I just, I just don't have a warm and fuzzy about this guys. I, I, I mean, and the fact is they're trying to keep this thing hush-hush. How many more of these type of things are going on across the country right now? And what could they be really, really preparing for? I mean, the FBI right now, Department of Justice, we know have extreme political allegiance to the leftist progressive Marxist Democrat Party. They have an extreme allegiance to them. Making up things. We saw the Russia collusion and, and, and all these sort of things. They're, they're putting people in, in jail right and left uh, for, for political uh, persecution. So I, I could read into this a lot. This would probably be a lot of tenfold hat conspiracy theory on my part, so I'm not going to say it, but I do read into this a lot. I, I read into this situation a lot. There's a lot here that's not said that I think we can 
Uh, we can we we can we can kind of uh, speculate some things. We can speculate maybe how this country's moving, right? Um, who knows? Maybe maybe it wasn't a, maybe it wasn't a training exercise. Maybe they really were going to go shake someone up, but they went to the wrong room. I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say. I almost I almost think it, it that would be, in my opinion the truth more believable that they were actually conducting an operation and went to the wrong room. But, you know, I mean, again, we're not supposed to have, you know, uh, I mean, it's not martial law. So why? Again, I I don't know guys. I I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate too much, but there's a lot here that is, uh, that is, is pretty concerning. And especially with the Department of Justice, the things they're doing. I mean, we, we just talked about the other night about how they're running this new uh, digital currency. They're in charge of it. And uh, yeah. Anyhow, guys, um, while I forget, you know, we have our compasses here. Our field, sorry, our field watch band compasses is going to pick up. Maybe not. Yeah. Titanium watch band compasses. So these fit on NATO straps here. Um, and a lot of people buy them, but they, they don't fit on G shocks, but we have our other one back. This is, uh, obviously a lot less expensive, but it has a rotational bezel here for navigation it glows in the dark and all that sort of stuff, but it'll fit on a G shock or, or wider strap. So if you're looking for a watch band compass, go ahead and, uh, snatch you up one of those. They're back on site today because uh, people were wanting to put that like on a G shock, but. Those are made specifically for NATO straps, but if you want to rock one on a G-Shock, you can get one of those there. And then also they're like 13 bucks. So where's the titanium was obviously more expensive because they're billet machine out of titanium. And also, did you see my thing here today? Like Batman without the cape. If you want to be like Batman, they've got to have a bat belt, right? So anyhow, let me remind you guys, all the Marines, we're only selling these two Marines. This is made from my uh, partner over there at Centerline Systems. And uh, American made, hand stitched. And we have these beautiful Cerakoted Cobra buckles. I don't know why this camera's not picked up tonight. With the Eagle Golden Anchor there. You can't get these kind of things anywhere else, but they're only sold for Marines. Now, I'm not going to ask you for identification or anything. I'm just going to man to man, honest. Um, but for Marine Corps, but if you want to buy it for a Marine, I'm fine with that too. But they're a Coyote with a, a black EGA. Um, and then on the inside you have like Batman, right? Um, you have your secret pockets that you can put your money and coins in, handcuff keys, shims, whatever it is, lock picks. And you have one in the front and then one in the back in case you get, you know, cuffed in the rear and you pull that tab out and get your gear out. Right. So anyway, those are on site. And we also have them non-marine buckles too. So in case you're not a Marine, but we have various, you can get various colors, things like that. It's rigid to hold a, a weapon a defensive blade, like a, a, a pistol defensive blade and extra magazine. So it's rigid. So it'll, you know, hold itself. And you can obviously when you got to do the business, you know, easily clip on and off, but we have those on site. And so, like I said, I wanted to show the w- ones with the Marine Corps, Eagle Globe and anchor special for Marines. And we still have some more on site. So, um, but you gotta have your bat utility belt, you know, I was telling, I was, I was telling me and my, me and my wife were talking the other day, and our kitchen counter is pretty high. And uh, I was like, I don't know how we got on the subject is random, but I was like, I can jump onto this counter. And my wife's a lot younger, man. She's like, you can't, you're too old for that. And so I jumped from flat foot onto the counter. And my daughter was like, you're like Batman. And I was like, yes, I am Batman. So that's why I wrote that. And my choice, I had the Batmobile too. I have all the gadgets, all the secret compartments and all that sort of stuff as well. So anyway, guys, Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on this training exercise. Maybe you can say what I, I'm not going to say on, on camera. You can you can write in the comments. I, I, would, I would like to hear your thoughts. Um, but it's uh, spooky. Very spooky. Let me know, guys. And as always, remember to stay frosty, stay strapped, and stay dangerous. Take care.